Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to create a three-dimensional Voronoi model, like you can see here. And the file is available as per usual on my Procygen website. You can just click on the download link. On the same page, there's also a description of the lighting steps that happen right in the viewport on the point colors. And there's a code snippet for the volume uh, to create those Voronoi cells. So let's start from scratch. We are going to take Tommy as a base mesh. And uh, we wouldn't need the clothing or the textures. We just want to clip off everything but the feet using a clip node set to 12 centimeters. And we would switch what we keep. Let's fill the holes using polyfill and switch it to single polygon. And now what we would like to do is convert this to a volume using VDB from polygons. Set this to 0 0.001. And in order to get rid of this faceted look, you would subdivide the mesh before we do anything else. Now there's a volume wrangle we will use to create this pattern. And the volume itself is called surface. So uh, just to get an understanding, if you subtract something from a signed distance field, in our case, this means we're adding something to it until it breaks, as you can see here, which happens when we do not provide enough exterior voxels. And when we add something to the distance, it means we're shrinking the volume. You can see this is happening here until it breaks again because also inside we're missing some voxels. So let's fill the interior. Now this was just uh, to get a basic idea. So let's remove this line. And what we're now trying to do is we want to fill this mesh with some points. So there's points from volume we can choose. And as soon as you decrease the resolution to something like 0.02 or 0.03, we would fill this with a few points. Make sure to jitter, seed, and scale a bit. Now, whatever you've chosen in terms of density, we would connect these points to the second input of the volume wrangle. And now we want to find out the nearest points. So let's create an array called PTS and use the near points function access the second input based on our position. And the range can be pretty large. I'd set it to 10. And we just want to find the two closest points. Now, first of all, we need to find out the position of the closest point. So let's use the point function for that. Referring to the second input, we want to get the P position back. And we use the point number of the first entry of our PTS array. Now we can copy this line to get the position of the second point. Just call it pos underscore one and access PTS one for the second entry. Now we want to know the distance from our current voxels position V at P to the position underscore zero. And the same way we would now copy this line call the first distance distance underscore zero and the second distance would be distance underscore one and it would measure towards position underscore one as well. So this would be our two distances. Distance one is further away. So flow D would be the subtraction from the dist underscore one to dist underscore zero. Now, in order to actually see those cell boundaries, we would need a radius. Let's set up a slider for that radius. Uh, the value shouldn't be too high, but now we should be ready to set F at surface to D minus radius. So what you should see if you don't set the radius too high are some cells, but they are open on the boundary of the initial surface. So let's set it to max of either D minus radius or the surface we had before. 
So that should close the boundaries again and the radius can now be played with something as small as 0.002 would work depending on the volume's resolution. And in order to get a clear sight, we would convert this volume to polygons. So this is the Voronoi pattern we currently have. If you do not like it, you can play with all the jitter settings and the point separation. Also, to get a less strict look, we would now smooth the SDF a bit. VDB smooth SDF can help by um, either using some filter uh, on the voxel radius or changing the iterations. And in order to compensate for that smoothing, we might want to increase the radius a bit. Now, in order to get the actually boundary, uh, the, the cells, you would switch to min of both, and then you would get this kind of volume. Let me just merge this with the boundaries. It uh, is not quite what we are after. As you can see, the cells are corrupt. So in this case, it's minus F at surface. And in order to uh, switch the normals, so the whole sign distance field is not inverted, we would say minus min. So that way, we have this Voronoi look. Um, the radius on the cells might be a bit bigger. To make it look more interesting, we get these nice gaps. All right, uh, now for some optimizations, we could uh, remesh the entire uh, structure to get a more regular and especially a triangulated uh, topology. I've set mine to 0 0.002, which is fairly dense. And these artifacts we want to get rid of by using a normal node, which we set all the way up to 180. All right, this would be a um, Voronoi model. And yeah, feel free to play with that. And if you're interested in the lighting or you simply want to see the file, just go to the Procygen website. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching.